Hi, I'm Anthony from CodeCloud. Today, I'll introduce you to Istio, the leading service mesh. We'll explore what Istio is and how it simplifies proxy management, security, and resilience of microservices. Let's dive in, and later, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you find it helpful. All right, let's dive into what we'll cover in this module. Now, we're going to go over the ICA, the sections and details, as well as the requirements to take this course and the I certification. Of course, before we learn what Istio is, we do need to understand what a service mesh is and also learn what a sidecar proxy is and how it fits into the service mesh. Now, we have a lot of proxy options, but Istio does use Envoy Proxy, so we're going to go over it. And just as there are many options for proxies, there is just as many options for service meshes. So we're going to cover and evaluate a few of those. But of course, this course focuses on Istio. So we're going to go over what Istio is and what it can do for us. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's review the Istio Certified Associate exam and uh, what this is going to involve. Now, the first thing we'll note you'll notice here is that this is obviously not free. You do have to pay 250 US dollars, but that does include a free retake. I myself had to use a retake and a lot of the people that I talked to who have completed this certification have also used the retake. And the reason is that this exam is quite challenging compared to other hands-on exams you might have taken. It is labeled as experience level intermediate, which is good because when I took it, it was labeled as beginner. I'm glad they adjusted this because it's anything but beginner. The passing grade can be found here in the ICA frequently asked questions. So if we open up this and we scroll all the way down, I believe right here, it is 75% or above in order to earn a pass. If you're familiar with any of the Kubernetes certifications, You'll know that this is uh, a little bit higher. I think the Kubernetes certifications are 65 or 66% to pass. So it's already a jump of 10%. You do get the same amount as you do with the Kubernetes uh, certifications, which is two full hours. And this is a proctored exam. And what this means is you are going to be doing this online. They review your desk, your surrounding area, make sure you're not cheating essentially. And then they will monitor everything you're doing, no whispering, you can't put your hands on your mouth, etc. So that's what the proctor exam is all about. And uh, obviously, this is a hands on exam. So you will need to be very comfortable with uh, Kubernetes. And you will need to be very comfortable using uh, kubectl. And I do not recommend that you take this course or this certification. If you're not familiar with Kubernetes at all, we have a lot of courses here at CodeCloud, which can introduce you to Kubernetes, get you more familiar. And when you're done that, you can come back here and uh, continue getting your Istio certification. You are going to be tested on the following domains here. So we have the Istio installation, upgrade and configuration. This will include one or two questions. Traffic management is a big portion of the exam. This has roughly 10 questions, I want to say three that can be quite tricky. Moving on to resilience and fault injection, this has about three to five. This circuit breaking, uh, circuit breakers question is uh, quite tricky. The securing workload surprisingly had a lot more questions than I had thought. It has roughly six or seven questions. And the advanced scenarios has three questions, two are quite tricky. So in total, there are about 25 hands-on questions. And what I mean by hands-on is you will need to use the terminal. They will ask you, do this and do that. And you are going to be doing this via the terminal using kubectl, applying things. That's why it's very important that you're familiar with Kubernetes and you're very comfortable using kubectl. So that's about 25 hands-on questions. And then at the very end, there are five multiple choice questions. They're mostly based on best practices and common issues. They're just five questions, but five easy points that you can get. And it's important that you manage your time well. 
In this course, we're going to follow the same structure as this domain. So in the next section, we're going to be installing Istio. Then we're going to move on to traffic management, you know, looking at gateways, destination rules, uh, virtual services, etc. We'll move on to resilience and fault injection, where we're going to be looking at fault injection, circuit breakers, securing workloads, authorization, authorization policies, and, uh, you know, mutual TLS, etc. At the advanced scenarios, we're going to be looking at and uh, some extras like common problems, best practices, and some tips and tricks to help you pass this certification. Some sections will include a hands-on terminal quiz. So not a multiple choice quiz, but a hands-on terminal quiz. And uh, at the end, you will get a chance to take the final mock exam, which is going to be very similar to what you're going to be getting in the STU certified associate exam. It's going to be two hours and uh, it will hopefully give you the best chances of passing this exam. Though I do have to mention that this is not that the final mock exam is not going to be identical what to what you're going to be getting from the Linux Foundation. So just want to put that out there. This is going to be a mock exam. You're going to have two hours to finish it. And if you, you know, are successful, you should be able to pass it when the actual exam is presented. So without further ado, let's get started. In this video, we'll go over the requirements in order to pass the Istio certified associate. So all different types of engineers can benefit from using Istio, whether you're a DevOps engineer, a software developer, a SecOps engineer, an SRE, it doesn't matter. Istio benefits all engineers in a positive way. Even though Linux Foundation's own website states no prerequisites, this is not true. Maybe what they mean is you don't need any prior requirements to take the exam, but you definitely need a few things before considering taking this course and, of course, the ICA certification itself. Now, knowing Kubernetes is essential and perhaps the most important requirement to consider. You should know what Kubernetes is, how it works, what a pod is, what a service is, especially what a service is. More importantly, you should know how to configure a lot of these resources you see here, like pods, deployments, replica sets, a daemon set, services, especially services. Istio revolves around services, so be very comfortable with that before you attempt to do the ICA. If you're quite new to Kubernetes, I suggest taking a Kubernetes course here in CodeCloud before continuing. Uh, Moonshed did a really good job with his Kubernetes for the absolute beginner. So I strongly recommend that you take this before considering the ICA. Now, I don't want to assume that everyone is familiar with uh, kubectl or kubectl, but it's uh, highly important. Most companies have adapted GitOps approach. So, you know, everyone's using something like Argo CD or Flux. But in the ICA exam, you will be required to apply, remove, edit, investigate, monitor, all from the CLI, and you will need to do this uh, using the kubectl or kubectl. You might be asked to uh, create a deployment or a service, so you have to do that in the imperative way. And if you're not sure what that means, it basically means you're using the kubectl CLI tool to create the resources as opposed to defining it in a file first and then applying it the way you would if you were doing a declarative way. Now, when you use the Istio, you're creating Istio resources, you are going to be creating it in a declarative way. But a question could be create a deployment in a service and you want to know how to use kubectl and apply it in the imperative way. The Istio certification takes place inside of a Linux terminal. So it should be no surprise that one of the key requirements is that you're very comfortable using the Linux bash. So commands like cat, change directory, make directory, touch, curl, ping, etc. And you should probably know uh, how to use a text editor like Vim. You can use Nano as well, um, but I think Vim is a better text editor. It's more powerful, flexible. Uh, just definitely be familiar with one as you will need to be creating files, etc. I did hear that you could use VS Code in the exam. I don't recall this, but again, I like being in the terminal and I'm, a, I'm pretty good at Vim, so I didn't take advantage of the VS Code. So it's probably best to just know a text editor anyway, because if it's not available, then you would at least have this backup. You should have knowledge of basic network uh, concepts like how DNS works, ports, you know, different protocols. That is uh, highly important, especially HTTP, HTTPS and TCP, as that is one of those key protocols that Istio will use in order to configure things. You should have, I guess, basic understanding of what Helm is and you know how it works 
and more importantly, how to apply Helm charts. As this might come up in the install upgrade configuration section of the exam. So you don't need to be a guru in Helm, but you definitely need to know what it is, how it works and how to apply Helm charts. That could be one of the questions at the beginning, right? So it's not required, but I personally think that if you have any of these certifications, it will really go a long way. It's uh, very beneficial because you get the experience of what the Istio uh, certificate associate is going to be like. Even if you at least attempted it, but you didn't pass, I still think that gives you leverage over people who haven't even tried it. In order of easiest to most difficult, I think the CKA, the Certified Kubernetes Administrator in, you know, that's just my personal experience, but just having one of these will be sufficient, I think. Again, not required. And if you're very, very familiar with Kubernetes, but you don't have any of these certifications, I strongly suggest that you at least attempt the mock exams that we offer here at CodeCloud in our Kubernetes courses before attempting the ICA. So you get a feel of what the experience is going to be like. Again, these are just suggestions, requirements that I will give you the best chances of passing. The exam is quite hard. So if you think you got these, there's no time to waste. Let's get started. If you're interested in mastering Istio and leveling up your cloud native skills, check out our comprehensive Istio Certified Associate course on CodeCloud. We offer hands-on labs, real-world examples, and everything you need to pass the ICA exam. Click the link below and get started today.